मैं सब लोगों को बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद देना चाहता हूँ हमें हिंदी में बात कर सकते हूँ इतना अच्छा नहीं है लेकिन हम हम धीरे धीरे सीख रहे हैं सब कुछ संभाल सकते हैं I don't speak whatever they speak here in Goa, unfortunately. So I, I wanted to um, congratulate the, the Bits Goa team here. This is actually the 10th anniversary of this event happening here. And it actually coincides exactly with our 10th anniversary of founding our organization this month. So, so 12 years ago, I moved from my hometown my home state of Minnesota to Gorgaon. I was curious about life and work in India, and I went to go work for the Confederation of Indian Industry. I went to go work with, as a consultant, to corporate leaders who were starting to team up with NGOs to try to tackle some big issues in poverty. But after a year and a half of, of wearing a suit and tie in 45 degree weather, I decided I was going to go on a little bit uh, different adventure. So I moved out to rural Jharkhand. I was quickly able to ditch the car and driver uh, for Royal Enfield. And this is actually the ninth anniversary of when I first came to Goa uh, on a Royal Enfield from Ranchi. <laughs> secondly, I was, I was able to move out of the Ranchi Gym Connor Club where I'd been put up and I moved into a mud house with a family of farmers. And I started kicking a football around with a group of local boys. And I quickly noticed something, which was that the lives of the boys and the girls, although they were in the same place, they were very different. I saw that while boys played, girls worked. They were always doing something in the service of their own families. But I saw that the girls, when they got a chance, were equally, if not more, interested in studying. Uh, so I started to do something in my free time as I was working at this NGO. Uh, I started to teach English as a volunteer at a local government school. And along with a friend, I created a, a scholarship fund uh, from our own pockets to send five girls and three boys who were dedicated students at this government school to a, a little bit higher quality school, uh, the private school nearby. Uh, we also, my friend and I, decided that we were going to buy school uniforms for the whole government school. Uh, unlike you guys, who are all engineering students, I'm not very good at math, and I didn't realize the actual cost of that. I missed a zero, I missed a decimal point. But luckily, my friend who was doing this, Greg, was a, a stock trader, so for him it wasn't such a tragedy. So in, after four months of, of living in, in Jarkin, I moved back to New York uh, I had a job waiting for me with my favorite professor from college. I had a lot of friends back there. And finally, my family, my family and I would once again be on the same continent together. But I was still really in search of, of, of a job where I could feel like there was some kind of meaning to it. And I decided after an autumn and winter in New York, I was going to come back to Jarkand. So that was for me when everything changed. First thing I figured out was that this scholarship fund that my friend and I created was a complete failure. So although we'd been employing a, a, a teacher to, to do private tuitions with these kids and try to help them you know, to, to cope up with their new school, uh, most of the boys were failing and most of the girls were not even going to class every day. But one of the girls had a great idea. She said she wanted to play football. So I thought, uh, not knowing where this was going to lead, I said, great, if you start a team, bring some friends together, I'll be happy to coach you. What I didn't imagine from, from this group, you know, a couple of groups like this, of around 12 girls coming every single day, you know, between the ages of, of 8 and 13, I didn't think that 10 years later I would actually still be working with these kids. I didn't imagine that from a team of 12, we'd move to having about 450 of these girls coming every single day being coached by 40 girls who've come through our program on 20 different teams. And I definitely did not believe that I'd get the chance to see these girls become youth icons in India and, and also abroad, demonstrating that, uh, that they can overcome lots of local issues and really bring, uh, 
bring fame and, and bring respect to themselves and also make their, their state and their country proud of them. It's a story of triumph of human spirit against all odds. These girls have fought against prejudice and gender discrimination, slapped, kicked and made to sweep floors by the bureaucrats in Jharkhand's panchayat. It is simultaneously a story of how elitist, how unfair, how cruel our society can be. But it is also a story of how if people and sometimes children decide to fight the odds, they can in, fa in fact become anything they dream of. We are very proud of you, Rinki. Thank you. Aap keh dijiye. Thank you. I'm extremely happy and thrilled and uh, I hope there are more uh, cases like this because I, I also do believe sports is something which is a huge equalizer. I think it should become a national movement now. So these, these, thank you. These girls have had the chance to, to make people all around the country uh, proud of them. They're, they're the first football teams ever uh, from India to compete at the biggest youth tournaments in Spain and also in the U.S. Yeah, that girl's got some ups. They're also the first group of coaches who have been able to be trained, first group of coaches from India to be trained at a La Liga professional team in Spain at Real Sociedad. So they, they've also been to the men's and the women's World Cup. They've been on expeditions in Alaska and Jordan, and they've given speeches across India at events like this, uh, also in the US, in Canada, and in Europe. And I think what these girls prove, at least to me, is that if you invest in kids, you're really going to get a big, uh, a big impact. And if you invest in girls, you're going to get an even bigger impact, because if you educate a girl, oftentimes she'll go on to educate others. And these girls are, are an example of that. All right, this is one of my favorite photos. And then the next one as well, that one I like a lot. So these girls, they've also proven that, that they're not victims, although they come from very difficult uh, you know, challenges uh, locally in their families and communities. Uh, they're not victims, they're champions. So we're saying that the, these girls are, the topic of today is flip the script, right? I mean, I, I think that that's just a, a brilliant motto for, for what these girls are doing. The fact that you've got a, a girl coming from a, you know, a family where the mom and dad are, are not completely illiterate and, and uh, you know, have uh, you know, uh, labor jobs that, that come and go. You know, that this girl is inspiring one of the you know, biggest football players on the, on the planet. So what are some of the ingredients that go into flipping you know, their script for a, a group of friends from, from these villages and collection of villages in rural Jarkin? You know, what, what's helping them to find their voice and, and uh, take charge of their own futures? So first ingredient for us is football. Now, those of you who, who follow the news, especially international news coming out of the US, you've probably seen that the team sports can just as easily be a, a dangerous uh, place, uh, you know, if, if coaches are creating that, that type of an atmosphere. But if it's done well, it can create a, a safe space for kids, especially girls, where they gain confidence, camaraderie, a sense of community. And so here's another one of my favorite uh, series of photos. So let's look at what that looks like, gaining confidence. This is young Seema, in who's, who was a shy player in her first year. Uh, this is Seema over there on the, on the right after two years on a, a UA team. This is Seema today, uh, coaching 26 girls, I think, are on her team every single day. And last year in the summer, she was actually uh, accepted into the summer school program at Washington University in St. Louis. <laughs> So they say what you, what you measure, uh, you know, really matters and, and you know, you, you can't manage it if, if you're not measuring it. So we're looking at trying to create these, uh, these communities through teams, so respect towards players, uh, dealing with players' failures. These are things that we encourage through our, our assessments of the coaches all the time, so they're constantly getting mentored. The second thing, and I think this is, is actually really surprising for, for people how we select our teams that have gone abroad. 
Uh, the first thing we look at is not whether or not they're good football players. We actually look at their leadership. And so we've taken this system from the, uh, from the top women's football uh, program in the world, which is actually coached by a man who was born in Bombay, uh, University of North Carolina. We take, their, we take this values assessment where we try to dig out the really, the sort of quiet leaders of the program who are supporting others. So girls rank their teammates based on a set of leadership values. We pump this into spreadsheets and more spreadsheets. And at the end, we get a list of, of which girls are, are really the most supportive. You know, if we make an investment in them, they're going to make an investment in others. And the, the ones who are not so strong, we try to help them to, to become better. So that's a sort of rising tide lifting all the ships. Uh, this is 13-year-old Kusum who is describing that process. Last spring, you had a chance to send a team to Spain. I was chosen to go because my teammate ranked me highly in leadership values of positivity, honesty, caring, selflessness, and unity. The trip to Spain was the first time I had gone so far from home. It was the first time that I played in big ground and turf. The other girls are very big and very good players. We lost our first match, but we wanted to win, so we worked even harder. We felt confident and supported each other. We won third place bronze trophy and we felt so proud. All right, so that's, that's what it looks like on the field. How does it, what does it look like off the field? So this is the captain of that team. Uh, this is when she was just a little kid, when she was just starting off. This is her in Spain, a little bit different. And this is what she was doing off the field. So when she came back from Spain, she was able to, to talk about the experience, and she was able to talk about, uh, about you know, why girls should be involved in sports. She was on primetime TV debates uh, with, with groups of men. She went to speak at a TEDx. Uh, this is a, a girl who went to speak at a TEDx in Delhi. Uh, she came back and was beaten by her teacher at her school for missing class, even though she had permission. And so she decided to put her teacher into the news and make him a little bit famous. Uh, <laughs> so the, the school very reluctantly uh, suspended him. And now here's, here's uh, Rinky today. Uh, she's coaching 46 kids uh, most of those are girls every single day. And she has um, uh, made a lot of people uh, laugh by sharing her future ambition to become a divorce lawyer. <laughs> so with, with all this good stuff, we still felt like, to a certain extent, we were kind of, like we weren't really telling the truth to these kids. We were saying, if you do all this stuff well, leadership, uh, supporting each other, if you come to our tuitions, you're going to be able to change your life, but, but we've, we realized that in order for them to really flip their script, to take their futures into their own hands, they had to have a good education. And so this is something I'm really proud to say I have very little uh, to do with. Uh, we've got an incredible team, and I'm going to share with you what, what kind of people are on that team. So uh, we don't have the fanciest school, as you can see, but we do have an extremely inspiring school. Uh, so here's a girl who's a goalkeeper with us. Um, she's uh, one of our great coaches. Uh, she's right now studying in a high school in New Jersey. She was selected for a U.S. State Department uh, scholarship. And this is her first year uh, report card. Now, it was taken with her own phone, so I'm not sure if you can see it. I'll read it for you. Uh, 96, 97, 97, 100, 99, 90, and 88. I will tell her you all clapped for her. So who, who's doing this? Who are these people who are coming to you know, rural Jharkhand and, and educating uh, this amazing group of girls? Uh, I'm going to introduce a, a couple of them to you. So here's Shubo. 
Um, his motto is, I love math. Uh, he's got a PhD and, and, an M uh, and a master's from IAM Ranchi in machine learning. So during his PhD with everything else, he was teaching for two years, full time. This on the right here is our vice principal, Sham, who works about seven days a week and also occasionally gets on his cycle to go around to check on the teams. Uh, this is Mrs. Cherian, who came out of retirement after teaching three decades at, at uh, Ranchi's uh, uh, most famous private school to teach girls. This is our, our group of teachers looking very tough. They don't normally look like that. Now these two, the one on the left, Maggie, is now at Harvard Law School. The one on the right is uh, doing her master's or PhD uh, at Lady Sri Ram College. And we have a teacher who looks remarkably like Rabindranath Tagore. <laughs> he won't like that I showed that. We've also gotten a tremendous amount of support from, uh, from people in the, in the state government. Uh, this is an IPS officer named Anurag Gupta, who's given trem a tremendous amount of support to our school logistically. Um, he's also written a, a computer pro programming book for kids. This is the head of the passport, Seva. Uh, it's because of him that our, our kids have been able to go to so many programs abroad. For instance, this girl, Sunita, who became the youngest speaker ever at the biggest conference for girls and women in the world in Copenhagen. So we're trying to help more girls to go from, from this scene to this scene. So we're now our, our big program for the next three years is we're building a, a college preparatory residential school uh, where girls who are, who are after, you know, older than seventh grade are going to be uh, staying at the school, uh, coaching thousands more girls. And to do that, we need a team. So we're building our team. If you think you'd like to be part of that, uh, send us a message. And keep something in mind. A lot of people think if I, if I do something small, you know, it's not going to have much impact. But here's a, a map of all the countries in the world that have a smaller population than Uttar Pradesh. <laughs> so if you do a big thing in a small place, it can still have a big ripple effect globally. Again, thank you very much for having me. Thank you.